Hello, I'm going to refresh a bread matter sourdough starter. Very simple, three ingredients. My original starter, 30 years old, which I got from a, a bakery in Russia in 1990. Some organic rye flour from Scotland the Bread, very fine wholemeal rye flour, and water. And it's a three-stage process really. I'm going to mix, refresh the starter tonight, which means bulking it up with 300 grams of starter, a kilo of flour and a couple of litres of water to make a very soft, sloppy, refreshed starter. And then tomorrow I'm going to add a lot of flour to, to that and make it into a very firm dough, break it up into tiny bits by pushing it through a sieve and then dry it, mill it and pack it into little packets. And that, that then has a shelf life of several years because taking all the water out of it eventually means that the yeasts and the bacteria in it last pretty much forever. Of course, when you're making this at home, you don't need to dry it. You can just keep a liquid sourdough in your fridge at home and use it. But this is um, a little packet that's going out widely across the UK and um, it enables people to hold on to it until they're ready to make their sourdough. And once they've reconstituted it with water and a little bit of flour, they're ready to go and they can use it forever. They only need to buy it once. And we encourage people to pass it on, to share it with their friends. And so they only ever have to start with one little bit of this culture from originally from Russia. And they're linked to all the people in the country and around the world who are using the same culture to make really good bread. So here we go. We have 300 grams of 300 grams of the old starter. You can see it's very liquid, very sloppy. And then a kilo of flour. And the only thing that I have to be careful about is not to put all the water in at once because if I do, then the flour will go lumpy. So just put a little bit in, start mixing it. And the key thing is to stop it getting too wet too quickly. So I'm going to work all the flour into the old starter. And essentially what's happening here is that the, the well-developed population of yeasts and bacteria in the original culture, which has been refreshed many, many, many times over the last 30 years, um, these this population, when it gets a source of water and of energy from the new flour, those yeasts and bacteria begin to do their thing. They reproduce themselves, so the larger population of yeasts is there to raise our bread later. But they also produce byproducts. In the case of yeast, it's carbon dioxide, gas, and alcohol. In the case of bacteria, it's all kinds of goodies, short chain fatty acids and very flavoursome things, things like acetic acid, lactic acid, butyric acid, which are both nutritionally very important, but also contribute to that delicious sour flavour that you get in bread. And it needs a fairly warm temperature for a rye sourdough because research has shown that about 33 degrees is the optimum temperature. 33 Celsius is the optimum temperature for it to reproduce. And you can see it's still a bit sloppy. I haven't worked all the water in yet. So a rice sourdough has to be really sloppy, really high water content because if you make it too stiff then it's much more difficult for the for the yeasts and bacteria to move around and do their thing. They need, they need, and also you can't see when, when it's uh, fermenting. So if you make it nice and sloppy, then you can see it bubbling later. And this will be fermented for about 16 hours. It's fairly warm, probably about 30 degrees, this, this mixture now. It'll cool down a little bit in the kitchen because it's not that warm in here. But um, over 16 hours, it will, it will refresh and the, number of viable yeasts and bacterial cells in here will increase exponentially. 
So it'll be a really lively, refreshed sourdough tomorrow and ready to make into the final um, stiff sourdough, which will then be dehydrated and packed in little packets to go out all around the country. Okay, 16 hours later, we've got a well-fermented sourdough starter. You can see the evidence of frothing and it's actually frothed right up the tub here, which is why I put it in this large tub. And that is now teeming with yeasts and bacteria, which are ready to go on to the next stage. similar bacteria that are found in sourdoughs. They're beneficial bacteria which communicated from bakers into their dough and then from the dough back onto the baker's hands. And um, that's the way that one of the most well-known sourdough um, bacteria called Lactobacillus san franciscensis is communicated because unlike most of the other bacteria, it's not found in the flour. So it must be transmitted on the hands of bakers. Now, that's the crumb of the, the sourdough. That's the overnight fermentation with fresh flour in it. That's fermenting away, infecting, if you like, all the flour. And I'm gonna put that in my dehydrator, dry it out, then mill it into flour. And that is the form in which customers can buy it and refresh it, pass it on to their friends and make lots of bread forever. When the crumb has been dried, probably takes about 16 hours, very slowly drying out, and during that time it's fermenting, so all the bacteria and the yeasts are multiplying up, and then it becomes a dried, very hard crumb, which I just pass through my stone mill into a powder like this, and that powder goes into a little sachet. We seal that up and put it in the envelope. This is compostable, so that goes back in the compost bin when you've tipped out the the powder and the recipe is on the inside of the packet so there's no waste really in this process at all and of course this starter which keeps for at least a year in the dried form can make all the loaves that you or anyone else ever needs to make in their life because you always keep a little bit back from each refreshment and so it goes on you don't need to ever to come back and use another packet of this original starter but you become one of the many thousands of people who are using this particular culture, refreshed with whatever flour you're refreshing it with, and therefore able to take a little bit more control over your food supply. And if you use a local flour grown in the fields by farmers in the fields around you, then you're really beginning to make a difference to the food system and perhaps engage with it in a way that we all need to in the future so that we don't suffer the extraordinary shortages and dislocations and unfairness of the present system. <laughs>